Good morning everyone, how you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now today I am in Coles Hill near Oxford and we've come to find the final resting place of Sir George Martin, sometimes known as the Fifth Beetle. I'm just gonna show you behind me, this is a very, very small cemetery. Look at that beautiful view, look. This is just like literally in the middle of nowhere but it's such a nice, area. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about Sir George real soon. Um, don't forget if you've ever encountered Sir George Martin at all, leave your comments down below if you've ever met him, got his autograph, anything like that at all. Um, sometimes known as the fifth beetle uh, because of the sort of uh, extension of the group as in the producing that he did for them uh, and so you know and so much more and um, yeah, we'll find out a little bit more about him real soon. Uh, don't forget, if you like the video today, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, maybe subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you don't know, if you subscribe to the channel, there's no fee to it. You just press that subscribe button um, and then you'll just be one of the unusual things, gang, which is pretty cool. It's a cool gang to be in, if I don't mind saying so myself. <laughs> anyway, it's very early in the morning. It is 5.52. So bearing in mind, we're in Oxford. I left Portsmouth at about 4.15 a.m., something like that this morning. But it's a beautiful, foggy day out here. Uh, you can just see, sort of see across there, um, across the open fields and stuff. Anyway, let's get on with it and we'll start talk, telling you about Sir George Martin. Sir George Henry Martin, CBE, 3rd of January 1926 to the 8th of March 2016, was an English record producer, arranger, composer, conductor and musician. He was commonly referred to as the fifth Beatle because of his extensive involvement in each of the Beatles' original albums. All Music has described him as the world's most famous record producer. Martin was born on the 3rd of January 1926 in Highbury, London, to Henry, Harry and Bertha Beatrice Nee Simpson Martin. He had an older sister, Irene. In George's early years, the family lived modestly, first in Highbury and then Drayton Park. Harry worked as a craftsman carpenter in a small attic workshop while Bertha cooked meals at a communal stove in their apartment building. In 1943, at the age of 17, Martin volunteered for the fleet air arm of the Royal Navy, having been inspired by the exploits in the Battle of Taranto in 1940. He trained at HMS St Vincent in Gosport. The war ended before Martin was involved in any combat and he left the service in January 1947. During the war, Martin travelled to New York and saw performances by Cap Calloway and Gene Krupa. He also did nine months of aerial training in Trinidad, becoming a petty officer and aerial observer. On the 26th of July 1945, shortly after receiving his officer commission, Martin appeared on BBC Radio for the first time during a Royal Navy variety show. Martin played a self-composed piano piece. As he climbed rank in the Navy, Martin consciously adopted the middle-class accent and gentlemanly social demeanour common for officers. Martin joined EMI in November 1950 as an assistant to Oscar Perouse, who had served as head of EMI's Parlophone label since 1923. Although having been regarded by EMI as a vital German imprint in the past, it was then not taken seriously and only used for EMI's insignificant acts. Among Martin's early duties was managing Parlophone's classical records catalogue including Baroque ensemble sessions with Karl Haas, Martin Haas and Peter Ustinov soon founded the London Baroque Society together. By late 1962, Martin had established a strong working relationship with Brian Epstein, the Beatles manager. Epstein also managed or was considering managing a number of the Liverpool music acts and soon these acts began recording with Martin. When Martin visited Liverpool in December 1962, Epstein showed him successful local acts like Jerry and the Pacemakers and The Foremost. 
Martin urged Epstein to audition them for EMI. Jerry and the Pacemakers scored their first number one with their version of How Do You Do It, a song previously rejected by the Beatles in April 1963. The group's next two singles, also produced by Martin, I Like It and You'll Never Walk Alone, also reached number one, earning the group the distinction of being the first British act to have their first three singles top the charts. In November 1961, new Beatles manager Brian Epstein travelled to London to meet with record executives from EMI and Decca Records in the interest of obtaining a record contract for his band. Epstein met with EMI's general marketing director Ron White, with whom he had a long-standing business relationship and left a copy of the Beatles' German single with Tony Sheridan, My Bonnie. White said he would play it for EMI's four A&R directors, including George Martin, though it later emerged that he neglected to do so, playing it for only two of them, Wally Ridley and Norman Yule. In mid-December, White replied that EMI was not interested in signing the Beatles. By coincidence, Martin gave an interview that week in Disc Magazine in which he explained that the Beat groups presented unique challenges for A&R directors and that he sought a distinct sound when scouting them. Martin met with Epstein again on the 9th of May at EMI Studios in London and informed him he would give the Beatles a standard recording contract with Parlophone to record a minimum of six tracks in the first year. The royalty rate was to be one penny for each record sold on 85% of records, which was to be split among the four members and Epstein. They agreed to hold the Beatles' first recording date on the 6th of June 1962. Though Martin later called the 6th of June 1962 sessions at EMI Studio to an audition as he had never seen the band play before. The session was actually intended to record material for the first Beatles single. Ron Richards and his engineer Norman Smith recorded four songs, Besa Me Mucho, Love Me Do, Ask Me Why and P.S. I Love You. Martin arrived during the recording of Love Me Do. Between takes he introduced himself to the Beatles and subtly changed the arrangement. The verdict was not promising, however, as Richards and Martin complained about Pete Best drumming and Martin thought their original songs were simply not good enough. In the control room, Martin asked the individual Beatles if there was anything they personally did not like, to which George Harrison replied, I do not like your tie. That was a turning point, according to Smith, as John Lennon and Paul McCartney joined in with the jokes and comic well play that made Martin think that he should sign them to a contract for their wit alone. As Martin had predicted, Please Please Me reached number one on most of the British singles charts upon its release in January 1963. From that moment, we simply never stood still. He reflected for the Beatles' first LP, Martin had the group record 10 tracks to pair with the A and B sides for, of their first two singles for 14 tracks in total. Martin's contribution to the Beatles' work received regular critical acclaim and led him to being described as the fifth Beatle. In 2016, McCartney wrote that if anyone earned the title of the fifth Beatle, it was George. According to Alan Parsons, he had great ears and rightfully earned the title of the fifth Beatle. Julian Lennon called Martin the fifth Beatle without question. Martin died in his sleep on the night for the 8th of March 2016 at his home in Wiltshire, England, at the age of 90. His death was announced by Ringo Starr on his Twitter account and a spokesperson for Universal Music Group confirmed his death. The course of his death was not immediately disclosed, though biographer Kenneth Womack subsequently wrote that Martin had battled stomach cancer. His funeral was held on the 14th of March at All Saints Church in Coles Hill, and he was buried nearby. A memorial service was held on the 11th of May at St Martin in the Fields, attended by Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, Yoko Ono, Olivia Harrison, Alton John and Bernard Cribbins. So there's all the information there about Sir George Martin. Now there was a lot more that I could have gone into, um, but he had such a very uh, large career as well. Um, so I would have been here all day going through all of it. Anyway, this is only a small little ground as you've seen from walking around. I've tried to give you a little bit of a view of what it's like around here. Anyway, I think I found it. You can't really miss it here, to be honest. Now it's quite faded to be fair, but it says George Henry Martin, 3rd of January 1926.
to the 8th of March 2016. And that's it, nothing else written on there. So we had the final rest in place of George Martin, Sir George Martin, of course. Um, thank you, George, for your massive contribution towards the music industry. And thank you, obviously, uh, for the Beatles fans out there as well, um, for your contribution towards their work with the producing and with their albums and so forth. Um, big name in the, in the music industry. So bless you and thank you very much. So there we go everyone, that's the final resting place of Sir George Martin there. Um, massive contribution towards the music industry and seemed like such a nice man as well and lived uh, a long life, which is good. And um, you know, like I've always said, it's good to see these people that have a stable sort of career that don't let the elements of that fame and notoriety sort of go to the head in any way um he just seemed like a very humble guy from you know interviews and things like that that i've seen of sir george let me know if you've ever met him before uh if you've ever sort of crossed paths with him in any way shape or form even if you've just seen him in a supermarket i don't mind um leave your comments down below and don't forget if you haven't done so already Please give the video a little thumbs up if you like it, of course. If you don't like it, then you don't have to. I don't mind. I won't be offended. And uh, I'm going to leave this beautiful place now. Um, it's gorgeous, though. It's just so peaceful and tranquil. And I'll see you all on the next one. Take it easy. Got to say, these gates are cute. <laughs> they are pretty cool. <laughs>